we are busy with a series about uncertainty and uh, in this version we are considering all as an expression of uncertainty. Together we will enter the conversation with uh, awe and wonder and uh, try and get to a working understanding of awe and uh, then bring it into the context of care and self-care. So first of all we'll be discussing what might all be and followed by why do we experience all? Why is all good for us? How could we perhaps cultivate more all? Thinking about an all journal and perhaps getting some feedback from the care community about an all journal. And then we might ask ourselves, but what might be the implications for care and more specifically for self-care? We end this presentation by looking at some further. To start with, we might consider typical expressions and experiences of awe as they are represented in these pictures. How might we describe awe? Awe is generally considered to be a combination of two factors. One, experience of vastness and then also about transcendence, that which transcends our understanding, our understanding models. Dacher Keltner says, being in the presence of something vast and mysterious that transcends your current understanding of the world. That is his understanding of all. But vastness can be challenging. It can be unsettling even be destabilizing because we place such a, a premium on understanding we associate understanding with knowledge with control and control leads to certainty and certainty to security hence the um, uncomfortableness with all perhaps so, Kaltner then ends by saying, and so in all we go in search of new forms of understanding. Carl Sagan used to say, somewhere, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. And this might be positive and negative, but somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. Just look at these pictures from the Kalahari. Some expressions of vastness from nature, from the animal kingdom, which inspires with awe. Looking at some sources of awe. Once again, Keltner. Keltner says moral beauty. Now, we, we're all familiar with experiences of beauty, which might be art, music, that type of thing. Keltner, however, talks about moral beauty, which he describes as exceptional physical beauty from source, from faces to landscapes, has long been a fascination of the art and sciences, and moves us to feelings of infatuation, affection, and on occasion desire. But then he says, moral beauty, exceptional virtue, 
character and ability that he describes as moral beauty, exceptional virtue, character, and ability. And these operate according to a different aesthetic, one marked by a purity and goodness of intention and action and moves us to all. The next source of awe might be collective effervescence, a term borrowed from Emile Durkheim. And that speaks to the qualities of emotional experiences. We feel like we are buzzing and crackling with some life force that merges people into a collective self, a tribe, an oceanic we, hence the collective the effervescence, that buzzing and cracking life force that we become aware of. Nature, of course, very little has to be said about experiences of awe from nature. Um, Kalkner says often what inspired a natural awe was a cataclysmic event, earthquakes, thunderstorms, lightning wildfires, gale force winds, and tsunamis. Not always pleasant experiences, cataclysmic, but still inspiring of all. Music. We all have experienced a sense of awe listening to beautiful music. Kalkner, once again, Transporting people to new dimensions of symbolic meaning. His experiences and experiences at concerts, listening quietly to a piece of music, chanting in a religious ceremony, or simply singing with others. Some more sources of awe visual design. Here we're thinking about architecture, we're thinking about buildings, we're thinking about the Great Barrier Reef, we're thinking about the Wall of China, dams, and paintings, visual design, leading to experiences of all. Of course, spirituality and religion. We shall see how often the sensations that arise during mystical awe and all encounters with wonders of life involve touch, very interesting, feeling, and feeling embraced and a warm presence and an awareness of being seen, being seen. Clues perhaps to the deep origin of the of emotion. And then all we will be experiencing life and death. A baby being born. Somebody close to us, a beloved one, dying. We're all struck by how in an instant life comes out of the womb. And on the other end of the life death cycle person makes the transition from being a breathing physical being to some other form of existence and lastly the eighth one epiphany when we suddenly understand essential truths about life Kelton is quoted saying emotions are like stories, referring to experiences of all here. Emotions are like stories. They are dramas that structure our day like scenes in a novel, in a movie, in a play. Just look at these pictures here. Experience, natural, all. 
sometimes we can only think of these as miracles. And then we reminded of Albert Einstein, who used to say, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. So why think about all? Why might all be good for us? Once again, Kurtin Kelpe, he says, our experiences of all seem ineffable, beyond words. But we might have noticed an irony at play. All's ineffability hasn't stopped. People hasn't stopped people from telling stories of all in journaling, writing poems, singing, composing music, dancing, and turning to visual art and design to make sense of the sublime. And our narration of experiences of all in these symbolic traditions a clear motive emerges. Our individual self gives way, and this is very important, our individual self gives way to the boundary dissolving sense of being part of something much larger. So one of the first effects of all a certain sense that we become part of something much larger, something vast. So experiences of all appear to increase our life satisfaction, reduce our stress level even, and then perhaps in these times very important, make us less materialistic and even give us an expanded sense of time. So often we hear that people will complain, oh, it's, uh, it's already March and we haven't, we can't tell what has happened to time. All gives us an expanded sense of time. So, if there are these benefits from all, if we might derive these benefits from how might we then cultivate all? Perhaps by living more in the present moment. Perhaps by being more mindful. Venturing into nature. Making a regular point of going somewhere where you are in nature. Just to experience the vastness and the smallness and the bigness. And then, yes, all from vastness. When we look up at the night sky, for instance, mind bending. All that we experience when we are, uh, when we encounter courage and inspiration. feeling of timelessness, we recognize awe or in gratitude, just thinking about everything that we've got to be grateful for, and then making awe a habit, experiencing it in our comfortable habits, in our safe habits perhaps through social connection. The awe that we experience when we meet up with beloved ones. All from creativity and the arts. A gallery. Just walking past a small piece of art, seeing creativity, experiencing awe. more compassion and a connected life. When we 
this experience of being connected to creation, experiencing that as all self. Kenna says, although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of the organic matter. Beautiful thoughts, inspiring with an experience of all. It's a very good idea to start up an all journal. And I just have Start off with a, an oral journal as a 30-day project, for instance. Play on the words awesome to experience all together. One's word psalm, all psalm. So an invitation, perhaps, when you listen to this, an invitation to once again for the next 30 days or so, Join me on a journey, a journey with all, where you become sensitized to vastness and transcendence. This may include encounters with nature, family, friends, travel, even gardening, the smallest detail, art and music, yourself, and experiences. Journal of things we embrace an awareness and consciousness of all. And these journals may become the voice of all when you join with friends and discuss them. What might be the implications for self care? All inspires enhanced experiences of connectedness and compassion. Connectedness and compassion. Compassion. These, as we will recognize, can become the ground for care and also for self-care. The sense of connectedness invites a, a counter-narrative against isolation. Isolation perhaps being one of the most critical dangers of our time. So how does all transform us? By quieting the nagging self-critical, overbearing, status-conscious voice of ourself, or ego thing, and empowering us to collaborate rather, to open our minds to wonders and to see the deep patterns of life. Walt Whitman, I celebrate myself and sing myself, and what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. Once again, food for thought. Diane Ackerman says, Wonder is the heaviest element on the periodic table. Even a tiny flick of it stops time. Just look at these pictures. Once again, Botswana and the Kanari. Kalahadi. Two more quotes, one from Albert Einstein, the other from Rachel Carson. Einstein, the most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious. It is the fundamental emotion which stands at the cradle true art and science. Carson, a sense of wonder so indestructible it would last throughout life as an unfailing 
antidote against the boredom and disenchantments of later years, the sterile preoccupation with things that are artificial, the alienation from the sources of our strengths. For further reading, you might like me to Keltner and Jonathan Holt, Approaching All, A Moral, Spiritual and Aesthetic Emotion from Cognition and Emotion. Keltner and Paul K. Uh, Piff, Self-Transcendent All as a Moral Grounding of Wisdom. Keltner once again, All, The New Signs of Everyday Wonder and how it can transform your life. Paquette, awestruck, rut, all expands people's perceptions of time. Stellar, self-transcendent emotions and their social functions. And then John Sauer, inspiration, inspiring wonder awe and empathy, spiritual developing, development in young children. Just look at this picture from the Kalahari. Isn't that awe-inspiring?